Hey, good morning, people of God. It is Friday. Listen, this is day five, part five of the series, Grow in the Prophetic. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm so happy that you're here. Give me some hearts, likes, and do share. In about a minute, I'm going to give some shout-outs here. Listen, and remember, at the end of this broadcast, I'm going to prophesy over a number of you, okay? Uh, this is something I don't do all the time because, uh, you know, we don't treat the gifts and the things as it's cheap or as it's common. You know, we need to release, uh, you know, at a special time, you know, uh, in special... Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so listen, today I want to talk about... Today I want to talk about... Uh, the rewards, the great rewards, and the promotions of a prophet. Okay, the great reward. <laughs> oh, Santa de Dios, oh, Señor, tú eres. Tú estás aquí, tú estás aquí, puedo sentir tu amistad. Tú estás aquí, tú estás aquí. Have you ever noticed most of the Hispanic gospel worship leaders their name is miel san marcos is san marcos there's always a marcos there anyways praise god i can't wait to see tonight at open heavens friday in Anaheim. yes we're not scared of no covid 19 covid 20 no covid negative 90 division we fear god and we shall meet Amen. So today I want to talk about the great rewards and promotions of a prophet. And thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing. I see a lot of laughing, smiley faces. <laughs> Woo, Shabba. And I want you to share, 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 because somebody needs to get whacked with this joy anointing. Amen. All right. The rewards and promotions of the prophetic. Um, everybody loves the prophetic, but not everybody loves the prophet. What does that mean? Um, everybody loves to be blessed by a prophetic word in a sense. You know, we love to receive prophetic words. Come on. We have lines for people to receive prayer and prophetic words. But we do not have lines of people who want to fast and pray. Like, you know, uh, there's a lot. Whenever, whenever the prophet says, I'm going to pray for you, lay my hands on you, we have lines of people that get lined up. But then, when it comes to tithing and giving, where are the lines? The lines are slim. Like, I love that meme of the Indian face where it says, You're going to be blessed. Oh, it says, uh, God's going to give you a new car. And then it keeps going down the line. Oh, it says, Read your Bible. It says, You need to fast for three weeks. You need to go and evangelize. And then, you know, it's just hilarious. Anyways, so everybody loves to receive a prophetic word, okay? But not everybody loves the prophet themselves because, remember, the prophet, prophetic people are very peculiar people, hard to understand and mysterious. And prophetic people, it takes a special grace to pastor, love, minister to prophets, okay? Because as I taught yesterday, many prophets, prophetic people have their walls up. They have their spiritual credentials up, okay? They're like, I have a PhD, prophecy, healing, and deliverance. And you're like, no, you don't. You got a PhD, a pathetic, uh, you, uh, <laughs> anyways. Whoa! I, I, I just, I'm just blowing up some religious devils today. If my head don't do it, then my MAGA bracelet will do it. My Trumponian bracelet will do it. Amen. And if and if my Trump bracelet don't do it, then my Trump bats will. Hey, better, 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 better. Hey, you talking to me, fool? And yes, I'm a minister. I'm a man of God. Hey, I said Louis from the Bronx. Hey, I said you from Brooklyn. Oh, uh, hey, hey, it's a little bit of Louis Vuitton. Hey, Gucci Pastone. Hey, Linguini, Luciana. Hey, Sharabora, Bossa. I just got this on Google on Amazon. Anyways. I knight thee in the name of Jesus. I knight you. Be, may you be knighted and ignited in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, there, everybody loves prophetic words, but many people don't love prophets. You know, I mean, they love to receive, but they don't really love the person, okay? It's like, okay, prophet, can you just perform for me today? Can you just feed me today, prophet? 
I don't care about the problems you've had. I don't care about the issues you're dealing with. I, I actually don't even care about you as a person. I just want to use you. I just want to get something from you. And uh, that's how so many people are. <laughs> And no, I'm not being, I'm not talking about you guys not caring about me. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? I'm not veiling this to me. I'm totally secure in my idiosyncrasies with Jesus Christ, all right? <laughs> uh, but there is a great reward as a prophet and as prophetic people. Even though the suffering and the warfare, misunderstanding, uh, the attacks are great. But there's a great reward. So it's a reward, okay? Um, and remember, we as prophetic people, we do not pimp out the gift, okay? We're not pimps, and we're, we don't prostitute the gifts neither, okay? What does that mean? That means that we're not, you know, it, these gifts are not on sale, okay? Like, we're, we don't put a price tag on it, okay? We don't put a number on it, like, you know? So, they're... they're we they're not for sale we're not pimping out the gospel and we're not prostituting the gospel okay we're not prostituting prophecies and we're not prostituting gifts okay and we're not pimping out uh the prophetic okay um shut that up but there is a great reward as we steward the prophetic so i'm saying amen okay listen i want to give you uh i want to give you five rewards all right that a prophet receives okay that a prophet partakes of someone write five rewards that prophetic people partake from okay five rewards that prophetic people partake from all right this is going to bless your face praise god and before we go into it let's go into matthew 10 41 a very famous scripture this is jesus himself the one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Someone say reward. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. Now, isn't that interesting that there's a differentiation there? There's a difference there with the prophet's reward and the righteous person's reward. There's a big difference. So there's many different types of rewards. Whatever you receive and honor you will receive the reward. You will partake in. And I pray today that you will partake in the grace and the rewards favor of this prophet and of this prophetic ministry mantle. I pray that you will receive and partake of the rewards, okay? Um, shut that up, Baba. So there's many different types of rewards and not just rewards when, when you die and you go to heaven. Praise God for the eternal rewards. But what is the reward here on earth? The reward on earth is that you actually partake of that grace and you become a part of that here today. Remember, you will only experience facets of God in heaven that you experience here on earth. Okay? I'm going to repeat that again because theologically, doctrinally, that might blow your mind and challenge you. Okay? Whatever you achieve and experience here on this earth realm, that is what you're going to have times whatever multiplied in the heavenly realms. That's why, that's why you know, a lot of people say, you know, it's important to pray and worship, but we need to evangelize and preach the gospel because we're going to be worshiping and praying forever. But then only on the earth realm, in, in this realm, do we have the opportunity to reach out and save souls? Okay? So whatever we experience and receive here, that's, in a sense, going to be the direct correlation of rewards that we receive, inherit, partake of in the eternal realm and life. All right. So I'm going to say amen. So there are different rewards. And when you receive a prophetic person, uh, you will receive rewards. All right? So I'm, I'm going to give you five rewards that prophetic people partake of all right number one friendship some say friendship the greatest honor that any prophetic person has prophet prophetic person is that they are a friend of god some say friend of god is that they are a friend of god okay and we're going to go to the scripture here exodus 33 11 
the Lord would speak to Moses. And I apologize, I'm going so fast because I need to prophesy over you. And I got stuff to do. All right, I got stuff to do. Anyways, Exodus 33, 11. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. But his young age, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Moses would speak to, uh, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Okay, someone say amen. I'm just getting another passage here too. Numbers chapter 12, verse 8 to 10. With Moses, I speak face to face. I speak with him clearly. I do not speak in riddles. Someone say riddles. Someone say Jeremy riddles. I let him see something. Of what I look like. So why were you not afraid to speak against my servant Ben Lim? I mean Moses. The Lord was very angry with them and he left them. So God began speaking to the people saying, I speak to Moses as a friend face to face. I do not speak to him like everybody else or even as prophets or prophetic people in riddles and parables and in veiled mysteries and in hidden meanings. Okay. So. The greatest reward that we as prophetic people have is to be friends of God. Some say friends, and of course that word friend means fellow, companion, intimate, lover. Okay, We are able to be friends of God where he shares secrets with us, where, where we look at him face to face, where his face is on our face, and, and we reflect and reveal his face. And So the greatest honor is friendship with God. Okay, That's the greatest reward. Right, and as prophets, it's it's it is our civil duty, our public service, to minister, to ad administer the voice, the word, the rhema, the spoken, the miracle anointing to the people. It is our civil duty and our public service. But our greatest duty, job, honor is to clearly see and behold the face of God. The greatest position posture as prophetic people is to see the face of God and to and to experience and become one with him amen I'm telling you I'm telling you the responsibility of a prophet and prophetic people is great shut up about numbers 11 29 Moses said to him are you jealous for my sake what I pray, I wish that all of the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord will put his spirit on them. So now Moses in this time is, uh, of course, there was some division in the camp and people were, you know, fighting against Moses, grumbling against their leaders. And uh, Moses says, listen, I wish God would speak to y'all too. I wish you were prophets as well. It's a high burden and call for you to always depend on me for the word of the month, the word of the Lord. It's it's a high call. It's a burden. But it's also an honor. And so Moses says, I wish that all of God's people were prophets. I, I wish that all of you would have ears to hear and eyes to see. And that you'd be delivered from the CNN Kool-Aid and from the stupor of Sleepy Joe. I wish that all of you would hear the voice of God and have this type of relationship. And it's available and it's possible for everybody in Jesus' name. Amen. So number two, uh, the second reward of a prophetic person of, of a prophetic person to partake of um, is function. Some would say function, okay? Prophets and prophetic people have a function. Some say function. So you move from the realm of friendship to function. Okay. And what is function? Function is the office. Some say office. It is a governmental office, a governmental stamp, appointment, ordination, commissioning. It's when the government of God, the kingdom, stamps something on your big forehead. 
and says, you are in the title, the function, the office of a prophet. The mantle of a prophet is over you, okay? And so it is about a governmental function, okay? Remember, uh, prophesying is edifying, is building up, okay? That word in Greek, prophecy, uh, uh, one of the words is to edify, comfort, and to exhort, all right, which means to build up, tear down, is to input, okay? So prophecy uh, is to edify, to build up, it is to tear down, it is to in encourage, it is to exhort, it is to rebuke, it is to correct. Um, of course, all in love, all right? So, but then all of that has to do with a governmental function. Some say governmental because when you operate in the prophetic, when you operate in the prophetic oil, the spirit of prophecy, the prophetic flow, when you operate as a prophet and in the prophetic, you step into the car, you step into the office. So there's times when I'm ministering, I know all of a sudden, bam, I stepped into a prophetic grace. I stepped into a prophetic office. One moment, I'm preaching as a pastor, as an evangelist, and all of a sudden, bam, I step into a prophetic office. Like, bam, I shift and I turn into Superman. Does that make sense? So, the, prof the second reward of a prophet is that you can function in the governmental realm and glory. Okay, and remember, there are certain rights, privileges uh, that certain offices have okay and as a prophet there are certain rights that prophetic people have in that governmental office in comparison to regular civilians or just citizens or babies or nominal christians there's certain rights responsibilities imagine i give you a key card okay because god has ordained you in the office of a prophet so i give you a key card right which means that you have an anointing and the cred credentials, the credibility, the stamp from heaven for you to see more, for you to speak more, for you to hear more, and that grace has been entrusted. So what does that mean? That means that you have now greater access to different doors and dimensions for the work of God. Someone say, I'm gaining access. Someone say, I receive my favor. All right. The third reward <clears throat> of a prophetic person is flow. Someone say flow. All right, this is so good. Uh, prophets and prophetic people are givers, okay? We are givers. I love Prophet Tim here. Love you, praying for you. Uh, you know, he always goes on Facebook Live about nine times a day, and he prophesies to the same people all the time. <laughs> and he prophesies. And he sows and he sows and he sows. Prophets, prophetic people are givers, okay? They're not stingy. They don't have an attitude. They don't have a chip on their shoulder where they're only going to minister the word of God if they receive a certain honorarium amount. No, they're public servants, so they continually serve and give. The prophet and the prophetic function voice office is for service. Someone say service. Remember, it's, we're all about serving, okay? The prophet prophesies to serve the people of God to build them up for their kingdom purpose in the fear of God. Prophets don't prophesy uh, to be worshipped, okay, or to be idolized. Listen, Christian celebrity idolatry needs to die today. Stop idolizing the people on stage. As long as we call it a stage, we're going to idolize the people on the stage. It's not a stage. It's an altar where those priests are under the fire of God. So we as prophetic people, we give, we sow, we give our time. Prophets <clears throat> don't just give teaching and revelation and impartation. We give our time. We give our love. We father, we mentor, we release, we love, we release healing, we release virtue. So prophets and prophetic people flow and i want to tell you right now because prophetic people give the most they will receive the most whatever you sow you will reap and i'm not talking about you sowing strife 
and fake prophecies, lame prophecies, prophesies. Okay, no, when prophetic people sow and give, okay, then they actually reap. So great is the reward. Some say, Amen. Some say, Great is my reward. Amen. Sakarababa. So prophetic people are public servants, okay? They constantly serve. Praise God. Come on, serve. Go low, okay? If, if you have a prophetic gift, you're called. Uh, it's because God's entrusted you to serve people and to help them, to heal them, to bless them, okay? All right, come on, somebody. The fourth reward of a prophetic person is that they become a covering for many people, okay? It's a scary thing for a prophet to not be received. It's a scary thing. Listen, hear me. It's a very scary thing for prophets to be absent in a region, for prophetic people to be absent in a region. It's very scary because that means that a realm of protection and intercession has left the building. And, uh, you know, you will see uh, the culture of a church by how they receive a prophet, okay? How they receive prophetic people and they honor the prophetic gift. You will see that, okay? Um, I've shared the story many times, but uh, when I went to Jinja, Uganda, I've been to Uganda, Africa twice already, but when I went to Jinja, Uganda, um, and Jinja, Jinja is the, the bed of the River Nile, okay? So it's the bottom of the Nile River in all of Africa, all right? And uh, um, years ago when Reinhard Bonnke did a crusade in Jinja, Uganda, one of the uh, officers stepped on stage, pushed the man of God off the stage, took his mic, and shut down the meeting. What happened afterwards? A curse came upon the whole city of Jinja. People tell me, Jinja used to be like, a, you know, like a, a, an Amsterdam, or it used to be like a Switzerland. You know, it's next to a lake, a beautiful city. Businesses were booming, bustling. There was life, there was activity. But that moment where this man, uh, filled with the devil, when he pushed the man of God, Reiner Bunky, off the stage, took the mic, shut down the meeting, and in fact, they even stole a lot of the equipment. As they did that, an open door to the demonic happened. The prophets left. Christians left. Businesses left. The grace of God left. And burglary, demons, rape, victimization, uh, demonization, democratization. All these things just begin to come in Jinja, which was once a beautiful city because they pushed the man of God, the prophet, away. All the prophets fled. The grace left, and it became a city, uh, it became a stronghold of witchcraft, and it became infiltrated by vandalism. That's a scary thing to see prophets leave. We want to receive prophets. Some say amen. We want to receive prophets. We want to be hungry and open to receive prophetic words. And listen, I know, listen, years ago, I, I was so hungry that I ate a lot of meat, but I chewed out a lot of bad bones. You know what I'm talking about? We have a comment saying, eat the meat, but spit out the bones. Meaning, you don't got to take everything, but take the good from the situation. Uh, and earlier in my younger years, I, I spit out a lot of bad bones, okay? Uh, but I was hungry, so I received. I, I was like a sponge i just soaked it all in the good the bad and the ugly i just soaked it all in because i was just so hungry but amen but prophetic people prophets we are covering in the spirit okay we are a prophetic wall of intercession we are a pillar we are a mama bear we are papas we are pillars where just our presence is a testimony just our presence i remember years ago a preacher saying i don't need to say anything or oh, pastor suzanne pastor suzanne hen will say 
All I need to do is put on my fatigues, which is my army clothes. All I need to do is put on my military intercession gear and the devil knows and the devil's scared. I don't need to say or do anything. All I need to do is get up. Come on now. And the fifth reward of a prophet or a prophetic person. The fifth reward of a prophetic person is a double portion. Someone say double portion. Mm. And I'm going to read this passage here. And I'm getting wrecked. Okay. I started off with some joy and just uh, goof and. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, let me read 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Kings 2 9. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask. What shall I do for you before I'm taken from you? And Elisha, the servant, the spiritual son, said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. Let there be a double portion of your spirit upon my life. The prophet Elijah knew that he was going to get caught up by whirlwinds of angels into heaven. And Elijah knew it was a sign. Pioneer, I am near. Keep pressing onward beyond your fears. Shoo. Man, I haven't been able to sing like that in weeks, actually, because I've been preaching, singing so much. And my voice has been tired. So I'm glad I'm getting my voice back. Someone say, I'm getting my voice back. Someone say, Amen, a woman. So, man, this video is like, the best. I love this video. It's like Shanga Bonga. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> Woo! Fire. So Elijah knew he was going to get caught up to heaven. And Elijah, and, El and Elijah asked his spiritual son, he says, What do you want me to do for you? I believe we're in a season. Where God is saying to you, yes, you, you, Jesus is saying to you, what do you want? What can I do for you? It's an open check. It's a blank check. And his hands are open. Hey, we are not token. Hey, JR token. Hey, yes, I'm smoking. Hey, Jesus Christ. Hey, I am not broken. Hey, and once upon a time and once ago. We're in a time right now where Jesus is saying, What can I do for you? Stop asking. What can America do for you? What can you do for America? And the prophet Elijah says to his son, What do you want me to do for you? And Elisha says, I want a double portion of your grace. <laughs> I want the double double. I want the animal style. Yes, I want the chilies and I want the Neapolitan shake. Please. I want the double double from the in and out. My gosh, even the bottom of the french fry and, and the soda pop has scripture on it. My gosh. I believe The double portion. Some of the double portion. God wants to give us a double portion. Double portion of what? Of the grace, of the gifting. And prophetic people, the greatest reward is that they're friends. They have a function. They can flow. They can flourish. Okay. Uh, but also, the we as prophetic people, we can experience and receive a double portion my gosh i'm telling you we're in a season right now where god is saying i want to release rewards listen there's a promotion in the prophetic i'm telling you right now who am i talking to? the lord is promoting you he's upgrading you listen everybody watching right now i know that you are in a sense a part of the remnant because you're really hungry for the things of god you're not afraid of covid Okay, you love righteousness, you're pro-life, you're pro-Bible, you're pro-Israel, all right? And I know that 
there's a reward and a promotion in the spirit. And when you honor a prophet, when you honor the prophetic words, you will prosper. You will succeed. You will gain rewards. Amen. I'm about to bring this to a close. And I'm about to start praying for you. Oh, this is the greatest day for you to be alive. I'm telling you, my gosh. People of God. Wow. If you if you could see what I see, you'd be amazed. If you could see what I see, you'd be amazed. I'm telling you. If you could see what I see, you'd be amazed, said the Lord. If you could see what I see, you'd be amazed, says the Lord. I want to give you eyes to see. I want to give you ears to hear. I want to give you eyes to see. Jesus. Come up here, says the Lord. Come up here, says the Lord. Come up higher, shakarabo, raka. Come up higher, says the Lord. Rababo, ndelele, ndelele, so. Ramande, shakaramande, sarabama. Come up here, come up here. Come up higher, says the Lord. I'm increasing your position. I'm increasing your promotion. I'm increasing your position. Rakando sore baby. Harabamande se mama. Do you know what I have in store for you? Says the Lord. I have good things planned for you. My gosh. We are 19, 20 days away from the elections. Praise the Lord. I'm going to blow my shofar. I'm going to blow my special shofar. Look at this. And uh, I have a new product that we're going to be releasing from Benlin Ministries. It's going to be incredible. And if you steal my idea, we will sue you. But we're... Okay, the Lord's not letting me say it. I just need to release the shofar blast over you. to comment below what spoke to you all right probably the best part of, the, of this broadcast has been that you've just been laughing hysterically like a hyena okay that's probably been the best part of this broadcast but uh i want you to just comment below what blessed you what ministered to you amen all right get ready for our new get ready for our new my new book i'm gonna release december 1st i can't wait i'm really excited listen please buy five books okay I'm really excited. It's called, Is This the End of Times or Just the Beginning? And uh, I believe it's going to be a bestseller, okay? So, thanks. Love you all. Appreciate it. I'll see you today at 5 p.m.